Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a React.js project styled with Tailwind CSS, something that you can use on your very own portfolio to help you get a job as a junior front-end web developer. So this is what we're building today. We're building a Netflix clone, okay? But what's cool is we're gonna be using Firebase for our backend. So we're gonna be able to create a new user with an email and password. We're gonna be able to sign in with that user and we're actually gonna be able to store user-specific data. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna be using Firestore, which is a cloud storage for Firebase, okay? And whenever we create a new account, we're actually gonna store this user into our database. That way we can store some specific data. So this is the front end of our application today. Like I said, Netflix here, got a nice nav bar at the top, and then kind of a hero presentation banner image here. And down here, we just have a row component and we're gonna be using the movie database API, okay? We're gonna be using a lot of really cool stuff in here like Firebase, um, like I said, we're styling everything with Tailwind. We're gonna be using Axios to make our API calls. We're gonna be using Context API, Use State, Use Hook, use hook. a lot of really, really cool things here in React. So notice how we hover over here, we get a little button here to save a uh, save the movie. So it says, please sign in to save a show. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you how it works. So let's click on that sign up page and I'm just gonna say, and test Bob is this guy's name at email.com. His password is password. You see, it's not very safe. So, notice when we sign in, we automatically get redirected to the home page here. And that's using React Router DOM. And then let's go ahead and click on our account page so we can see we have no movies saved here. So, let's go ahead and save a couple movies. We'll save, uh, let's see, Northman, Batman, and this Spider-Man movie, if we cruise back on over to our account, you can now see that these movies are stored into our account. So we can log out and log back in. The movies will still be there because they're in our database, uh, Firestore database using Firebase. So let's go ahead and delete these. And I'm gonna show you how to build this from scratch. Like I said, using um, React.js and Tailwind CSS. So if you wanna see how I built this, you build it along with me, feel free to use it. Uh, in your own portfolio so you can get a job as a junior front-end web developer. So let's go ahead and build this thing from scratch. I'm just gonna drop that thing down here. And all I am in here is um, <clears throat> it's just VS Code, just a blank code editor. And I've already created a file that I'm in, this Netflix React.js. I'm just gonna bring that over. So let's just go ahead and hit Control Back Tick button to open up our terminal. We're gonna create our React application. So I'm gonna say yarn, see create, and then react dash app. And I'm just gonna hit the period there so it installs it into our current directory that we're in. So we're gonna be building this with Tailwind. So, and that's the first thing that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go over to Tailwind CSS while this thing installs. And like I said, we're gonna have some protected routes, you guys, which means I'll show you real quick. We go to the account page. Notice we're not signed in right now. We go to the account page. It should just bounce us right back to the homepage. So protected routes if a user is not authenticated be doing a lot of really, really cool things in here. So in for Tailwind there, tailwindcss.com, go ahead and click on get started. We're gonna click on framework guides. And then going down here, we're gonna be using the create React app, okay? First thing it wants us to do is create our React application. So we've already done that. Next, if you're using NPM, just copy that whole line. Uh, I'm using yarn, so that's why I'm only gonna copy this part of it here. And I'm just gonna say yarn um, add, paste that in. And then this next command here, MPX there, go ahead and copy that whole thing there. Go ahead and hit that. And this is gonna create a, a Tailwind config file there. And this is very important because the next step is actually co uh, copy this into the content array, okay? So that's what we want right there. And then we need to add this into our index.css. So let's go ahead and just replace all that boiler code with, our, with those styles there. And that's all we need from Tailwind, okay? So, Next, let's go ahead and install some dependencies that we're gonna be using for this project. So, and right there, I just hit the Command B button, okay, to, to toggle our sidebar here, if you're wondering what I was doing there. So, like I said, let's install our dependencies, for yarn add, and I'm gonna install Axios. We're gonna be using Axios to make our API calls. We're gonna be using React Router DOM for our routing. Then we're gonna be using Firebase. So go ahead and install that and see. Go ahead and get those installing. There's a couple more. So. And while those are installing this app.css, the app.test, logo.svg, the report web vitals and the setup test, these are in the source folder. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete those to kind of declutter a bit there. And we're only gonna be working out of this source folder right there. So it should just have the app.js, index.css and index.js. So 
Let's go to our package.json, Axios, Firebase, React Router DOM, perfect. So I forgot the other ones. We're gonna need um, Yarn Add. We're gonna need React icons for this portfolio or for this package here. And we're also gonna need, uh, we're gonna need Tailwind, scroll bar, hide, okay? So, and what that's gonna do basically, um, so we have this row and we don't wanna show the scroll bars. So, and Tailwind doesn't have a class name directly to, uh, or natively to, to remove those. So that's why we need that there. So we got those two more packages in there, done with package.json. So in this uh, config file, or sorry, in the, uh, yeah, in the config file, what we wanna do to use that package is say require, then we're gonna put in here, tailwind scroll bar hide, that's it right there. Perfect, that's all we need to do uh, for that there. And what we do need to do is uh, add in, I wanna add some base styling here. And I'm just gonna bring over a, um, I'm just gonna bring over a font that I'm gonna be using. You don't have to do this, you can use whatever font you'd like, the, the default font, or if you wanna go to Google and bring one in, I'm just gonna paste one in there like that. Then this is about the only uh, CSS I'm gonna write, but I'm just gonna say background color. Whoop. Background color, and I'm gonna give it a color of black. All zeros there. And then font family. Like I said, we're gonna be using Lotto. And then it's always a good idea to give secondary fonts just in case the browser does not support that. So that's all we need to do in our index.css file. I'm gonna close that there. Now let's go ahead and start our server with yarn start. Now, if you've already started your server and then you start you installed Tailwind while your server was already running, then you're not gonna see the Tailwind styles go into effect. So make sure you restart your server if you if it was already started. So we should just have a blank screen here. We have uh, our errors here and that's okay. Let's go ahead and fix those. So our index.js, let's go ahead and delete that report web vitals. We're getting those errors because we deleted those uh, all those cluttered files. So in our app.js, we're gonna delete that there. And we're just gonna leave this as an empty frag there. Perfect, that's what we want. And if we type in here, h1, hello. We're not gonna be able to see this because we'll give us class name, text white. We should be able to see some text in there. Perfect, that's what we want right there, you guys. That's what we want, perfect. So let's go ahead and um, kind of start our layout of our project here. So inside of our source folder, okay, let's create another folder called components. And this is where all of our components are gonna live. So let's create our navbar component, navbar.jsx, JS or JSX, it doesn't matter. I use JSX so I can use my HTML snippets, which kind of save a little bit of time. And then just a few uh, plugins that I'm gonna be using in, in a VS Code here in this build, and I recommend you get these as well. So go over to this plugins tab. So if you're using Tailwind, I highly, highly recommend you use this, uh, where is that? Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. What that's gonna do is, while we're typing our class names for Tailwind, it's gonna give us suggestions and it helps, it saves you so much time when you're developing. So definitely get that Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Also, we're gonna be using this uh, prettier function, um, this prettier right here. And what that's gonna do every time we save, it's gonna reformat our code and just keep everything looking nice and neat. Then the third thing we're gonna be using is the ES7 React Redux snippets. And that way we can generate functional and class-based components just with like uh, literally a few characters. So we're gonna save a lot of time. And this is the React Redux 7 shortcut right here. R-A-F-C-E is gonna generate a functional component. And that's all we have to do to generate functional components here. So for our navbar, <clears throat> let's go ahead and import our navbar here. So our app.js, say navbar, go ahead and hit enter there. So auto imports. Another little trick here, you guys, if it didn't import, you can just press, uh, if you're selected at the end of the component, you just hit control space bar. It's gonna open up this little dialog box and it'll, it'll usually always prompt you if you wanna automatically import something. So just to save a little bit of time there. So inside our nav bar, let's get started. So inside our nav bar, Gonna have an H1 in here, and this is gonna say Netflix, just like that, perfect. And then we're gonna have a div, and inside this div, we're gonna have two buttons. We're gonna have a sign in. I'm gonna copy this down. I'm just gonna hit uh, Shift, Alt, then the down arrow. And that lets us copy things down or up. That's what we're gonna say here. So let's just give this a class name so we can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna say text white, first of all. Boom, there we go. Now, Actually, 
I'm gonna leave that blank for now because we're gonna come back and style everything individually. So wait, let's do this H1 first so we can actually see what we're doing. So class name, I'm going to say text red, and I'm gonna be the 600. And text, this is gonna be our size. I want it to be, mm, let's see, 4XL, font bold, there we go. And cursor, not auto, but pointer. There we go, I'm gonna shrink that down so you can see a little better. But that's what we want right there, perfect. And for the buttons here, I'm gonna press this alt button so we can actually type on multiple lines. Or actually, I'm just gonna style this button here and I'll show you why. So let's go ahead and give this button some styles and I'm gonna soon say for this button, we want it to say BG red 600. That's a background red of 600. The numbers go from, I believe, 100 to 900. The higher the number, the darker it is. So if we said uh, 200, for example, this would be almost like a pink color. So like I said, I'm gonna leave this at 600. And then for padding, PX, I'm gonna say uh, C6. This is just padding. Then PY for padding on the top. Bottom, I'm gonna say two. And the way tailwind works for numbers, four is one rim, okay? so. If we hover over this, if I hover over this, you see that dialog box pop up. That is the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense plugin that I was referring to. So super powerful, it helps you a lot. So as you can see, four is one rim. Uh, if you did eight, that would be two rim, but and two would be uh, just 0.5 rim. So that's what we're gonna do right there. Now you can just say rounded to get some rounded corners. Cursor pointer. This is how fast Tailwind is, you guys. You can style up a button so fast just like that um, without having a CSS file. So that's how we're gonna do that there. And then for this button here, we'll say class name, and I want this to be text, white, and I'm actually gonna say margin, or sorry, padding right of four, which is one rim. So but we want this display on the same line, so let's give this a class here. We'll say flex items center. Then we're gonna say justify justify between and then p4 so we want this to stand out just like that that's perfect that is what we want right there you guys everything's looking good um we're at a few more styles to this here so we want to give this a z c10 i'm just gonna give this um, a z of 100 i'm putting this in brackets because z-100 does not exist in tailwind and whenever we're going to put a value in tailwind we can replace it with uh, brackets and we can enter in our own value. So I'm just gonna enter that in just like so. And that is all we need to do. I do wanna make this positioned as absolute. Perfect. So let's have a look, boom, refresh. Oh, what's going on? Oh, I deleted the width full, sorry about that. There we go, width full, that's what we need there. Perfect. Sorry, let me readjust it here. I want to make sure I'm in this video there for you guys. So there we go. That is all we need to do for our nav bar for now, at least. And what we want to do next, let's open our sidebar back open. And the way we're going to structure our, our application is we're going to have a home page, right? And this is going to be considered the home page. Then we're going to have a sign up page, a sign in page, and also a login page. So four pages. And let's go ahead and create those here. <clears throat> So inside of our source folder, right, we're gonna create another folder called pages. And for now, I'm just gonna create one page and I'm just gonna call it home.jsx. Now I'm gonna type RAFC so we can get our functional component here. And let's go ahead and uh, import this here. So like I said, we're gonna be using React Router DOM. And so we can start using links and routes. Let's go ahead and configure React Router DOM. So let's go into an index.js. I'm just gonna select that and I'm gonna replace this. So the way, what we have to do with React Router DOM, we actually have to surround our entire application with browser, browser router. Just like that, then go ahead and import that. Now in some, in some builds you might see somebody just say something like this, router, that's fine too. But if you do that, you have to go up here where you import it and say browser router as router. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, people just do it because they think it's a little bit cleaner, so. That's what we're doing there. <clears throat> so let's go back into our app.js. Now we want our nav bar to be displayed on all the pages, no matter if it's a home page, sign in or login page, doesn't matter. We want it everywhere. So I'm gonna leave our nav bar at the top and then I'm gonna say routes, okay? And this is all for React Router DOM. So we have routes and then in here, we're gonna have individual route. And this is gonna be, sorry, not path, but two or a path, not two to the homepage and then the element we want to display, we're gonna put this in curly brackets, 
We just want to display the home. So I'm close that out like so. There we go. So routes is not defined or routes. So let's just go ahead and like I said before, control space bar, just like that lets us auto import it. I'm gonna do this one as well. Perfect. That's looking good right there. So what we're gonna build now is our actual um, main component right there at the top. So let's go ahead and get started with that thing. So inside our components folder, create a new, sorry, not a folder. Inside the components folder, we're gonna create a uh, new component. I'm gonna call it main.jsx, okay? And R-A-F-C-E. And we're gonna be doing a lot of things inside this component here. We're gonna be using uh, Axios, Ustay, and use effect, all those hooks inside here. No, but we'll auto import those here when they come. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna open up my um, terminal here, or sorry, our console there. So that way all our, our developer tools, so we can, I like to have the console open so we can use that to our advantage. So inside here, let's do a few things. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have some state. So I'm gonna say const, open this up and say equal to use state. It's gonna be an empty array because that's what our, that's what our, our API call is gonna return. So in here, I'm gonna say movies and set movies, okay? And then let's make our API call. So before we make our API call, now would be a good time to get set up with our actual API key. So I'm gonna open this up a bit. And where we're gonna go is the movie database here. Now I'm already signed in. If not, go ahead and create account it is 100% free. You don't have to supply a credit card or anything like that. Just create a free account. And once you're signed in here, just click on this button here, go to profile and settings, sorry, down here, settings. And then over here on the left, we're gonna look for the API, just right there, perfect. And then over here, this is our API key. Now I'm gonna copy my API key don't use my, my API key. It's not going to work. Once I'm uh, done recording this, I'm going to, I'm going to close the account. So make sure you get your own account and your own API key. So where are we going to put our API key? So what we're going to have is a file to keep everything nice and neat, a request file. They're going to have all of our endpoints. So inside our source folder, I'm going to create another file. And this is just going to be called requests.js. Okay. And in here, I'm going to say const key equal to, and this is going to be a string. I'm just going to paste it in there just like so. And then next, I'm just going to copy this over because I already have all the endpoints that I want to use for this build. And I'm going to just kind of show you what we're doing. So basically I put everything as an object in here and then we're going to export this so we can use it outside of the, um, outside of this file. So export default quests. And these are the imports, import, or sorry, endpoints right here that we're gonna be using. And this is our key. And all we did, I put these in back ticks. That way we could use a template literal. Um, otherwise you would just have to paste your key in there like that, but keep things a little bit more organized and secure. You just wrap everything in a template literal, just like that. But make sure you have back ticks so you can do, use that functionality, so. If you want to, you just grab these. These are popular, top rated, trending, or upcoming. If you want to cruise on over here to the TMDB here, um, just click on that developers. I'm trying to see if you want to make, if you want to find other um, other endpoints, you can just kind of cruise around here and, and find them, like try it out. So this one's for a specific ID, get similar, recommended, get latest, now playing. There's all kinds of things that you can do with this uh, with this API. So but I have the one that I'm gonna be using here. So what we're gonna do is go back into our main, okay? And we need to import this. Import requests from, that was from request. There we go, perfect. Now let's go ahead and use Axios to make our API call. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap this Axios in a use effect that way um, we're only gonna make a API call whenever the component mounts, whenever this, uh, whenever the page loads. So we're gonna add in a dependency array here. Otherwise your API will just making nonstop calls and it'll just wear out your API and it'll probably get banned. So make sure you add that dependency array there. So what we're gonna say is axios.get, then our URL goes in here, right? And our URL is from this request. So we're gonna say requests dot, then go in here, we can say dot popular or request popular, 
or uh, top rated, whatever you like. I'm just gonna use this top one popular. So, add in here. There we are. So request dot request popular. It's so a return a promise. So dot then, and this is gonna take in a response here. Okay, it's the arrow function response, and we're gonna set this to set movies. So our state there, and we want to set this to response dot data, and let's just leave that like so. And I'm gonna console dot log movies. So we're making we're, when our when our component mounts, we're gonna make an API call, okay, and it's gonna grab the data and store it inside set movies, and then we're gonna console log it, so we should be able to see it down here. So let's have a look. Oh, we need to add, sorry, we need to add our uh, main here. So let's go to home. There we go. And inside here, we'll just say main. So let's go ahead and import that. There we go. Leave that as a fragment there. So see, we've got some errors here. Requests, not defined, not defined. That's fine. So let's go into our main. And so we have that. We need to unimport the use state. Okay. Get that imported. There we go. Perfect. Now, we're okay, just didn't spell that right. Requests. What was it? I misspelled this line 11. Requests. I didn't requests. There it is. Just add an extra S in there. Perfect. Okay. That's what it is. You get hung up on these little things there. Okay. So back, I'm going to uh, go back to our main. So now we're, we're locking the movies here. Okay. So this is what we're logging. We're getting back some data here. So page results, total pages. Now I actually don't care about any of these except for the results. So for the results, what I want to do, we can actually kind of um, narrow this down a little bit more. I'm going to say dot results. And if this updates again, now you can see, we only see this results right here. So we have a list of 20, 20 movies. So, what I only want to display one movie at a time, and we want this to constantly reload every time we uh, refresh the page. So this is how we're going to do that here. We're going to come over here. We're just going to use some plain JavaScript on here. It doesn't matter really where you put it, as long as it is above this return kind of in here somewhere. So what I'm going to say is const movie, okay, plural, right? Now I'm going to say movies, then open up the array here. I'm going to say math dot, we're going to use floor, okay? It's going to be math dot random times math, or sorry, movies dot length. There we go. And now instead of logging movies, we just log movie. So what this is doing is taking the movies and just picking a random one each time from start to finish there. So as you can see, this is the ID of the movie, 629542. If we refresh this, it should change. There we go. Now we're getting a different ID every time we refresh the page. So that is what we want right there, you guys. That's perfect. Now that we know we're getting data back and we know we're getting like correct, that's what we want. We're getting a different movie every time. Now what we wanna do is actually go ahead and display some stuff on the page here. I'm just gonna shrink this down so we can see a little better. I'm gonna bring this open, there we go. And so let's go ahead and get to coding down here, our JSX here. So what I want to say, this outer div, I'm gonna give this class name, I'm gonna say width full H. I have my little cheat notes over here. I can't remember all of this styling right off the top of my head, so let's just keep it going a little bit faster here. So then in here, and we only want the image to be 550 pixels high, okay? So that's what we're saying there, 550 pixels. Now this next one, we're gonna class name, we're gonna say width full, H full, perfect. And then let's do our image in here, okay? So image, now instead of this alt tag, a kind of cool trick here, instead of just putting a slash, you know, you always wanna have good alt tags, um, not just because React will start throwing errors, but it's also really, really great for SEO. You never wanna have any blank alt tags. So I'm gonna replace, replace those um, quotes there with brackets, and what we can say is, um, Let's say movie, okay, movie dot uh, title. And if you look down here, we cannot read, let's see here. Might have to use some optional chaining there. Boom, there we go. So we're gonna use this optional chaining. That way we can reach uh, nested objects in our, in our array here. 
So this is what we're looking at, the title down here. That's where that's coming from. You can see it display right there. So perfect. Now let's grab our image. Now, if you see our image down here, we're looking for the backdrop path. That is our file path. That's the image path. But if you see, that's just kind of like, um, that's not an entire URL path. So let's go on over to our developers here for our API, see what's going on. So introduction, let's click on images. And basically what this is saying is that you have to have a base URL and then you just add this to the base URL. So this is a full example here, but this is actually the base URL right here. This little part right here is a sizing right there. And then this is the actual um, endpoint. So I'm just gonna select that, okay? And I'm gonna scroll this back down. And now that we have this, I'm just gonna put it in here. And so inside the curly brackets, we're gonna use some back ticks, okay? So go ahead and paste it. We're using the back ticks. So I'm gonna say original for the sizing. And this is actually a part of the movie database, okay? And then let's put a slash. And then this is why we use our back ticks. We're gonna use our template literal again. So the dollar sign and then our curly brackets. And then we can say movie. We're gonna do our optional chaining, okay? And then we're just gonna say backdrop that group backdrop underscore path now we should actually see our image that's what we want right there you guys that's cool right there so uh let's add some styling we haven't really added any styling yet to it so let's go ahead and do that for this image i'm gonna give it a class name we say width full h full and what that's saying is the full is just it's the same as saying width a hundred percent if you were to say uh w dash screen that would say width a hundred percent viewport width so that's what the width full is and width screen whenever we get to that so that's what we want right there but i'm going to add in object fit because right now our aspect ratio gets all messed up so all we have to do is just say object fit and that fixes everything man i love telling you guys this is oh something's not working here we need to add a couple more things uh cover is actually what it is sorry this is how easy tailwind is you guys no matter what size it is it's going to stay uh looking right there that there's going to be no aspect ratio uh, distortion so perfect that's what we want now we actually going to want to add an overlay over the image okay that's kind of black on the left and just kind of a gradient over to the right and the way we're going to do that we're going to add another another div in here and <clears throat> let's put it right here and nothing's going to go inside this div we're just going to position it absolute so we're just going to say absolute um we'll say width full same height of 550 pixels and again we're using these brackets so we can put in our own values it could be pixels rim percentages uh, degrees any uh, type of custom input we can put inside these brackets and tailwind and so we're going to use a bg gradient and this is how we add a gradient and tailwind so we'll say to r for bg gradient to right and all we have to say is uh from dash black now we should get a nice overlay look at that that's starting to look clean that's starting to look clean okay you guys so let's add in this div right here with that information next so we still got a little bit more to do on this component so right here let's go down and for this div here we're gonna have a div and what we're gonna have is let's see we're gonna have the buttons and then a couple p tags so for our button i'm just gonna say button this one's gonna say play i'm gonna copy that down this one's gonna say we'll say watch watch later so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna click right there and i'm gonna press the alt uh, button right and click at another spot that way i can type in two spots at the same time so save some time there class name and for these uh buttons here say border border or see border bg gray uh we'll say 300 text black border gray 300 py2 and px-5 all right perfect now um <clears throat> on this one here actually on this watch later i don't want a background so i'm just going to delete that and I actually want the text to be white on that button. So I'm just gonna change this one to white. And then I'm just gonna give a little bit margin. Margin left four for one rim, so it kind of slides over a little bit. Now, the, this div in here, um, forgot a div here. I'm gonna create another div, okay? And so the div that contains these buttons, I'm gonna press the Alt button, I can just slide that up in there, okay? 
save it so it's nice and formatted. So the button, the div right here, I'm gonna add and that we just created. And this is gonna contain, dang it, what'd I do? This div right here is gonna contain everything. And then the button, the container we just did, the div we just did just held those buttons. So this is the outer div right there. I skipped over it. So this div, what we're gonna say, we want it to display absolute width, full, top and then we're going to use our brackets again so we can this time use percentages top 20 percent and then we'll say p-4 and then we're going to use a, a media query md for medium dash p-8 dash and tailwind is a mobile first design approach meaning all the styles that you enter in here are going to be applied applied on the smallest device going up and if you want to make any changes all you can say is md so that means Anything above um, the median breakpoint, which you can see right there, 768 pixels. Anything above 768 pixels, apply this style specifically. So they're small, medium, large, and it goes up the chain like that. So that's what we want right there. And in here, we're gonna have an H1. And this H1 is gonna be movie. Use the question mark for optional chaining. And then we're just gonna say title. So boom, there it is. That's what we want right there. Perfect. All right, you guys, I'm loving this. Smash that like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of this. I know you're gonna get some value when we get to the Firebase part. So here we go. Uh, let's do text 3XL on all devices, right? Then anything above the medium breakpoint, we want that text to shoot up to 5XL. So as you can see, this is 3XL. And once we get up, I believe it's 768 pixels. So we see that top right. Let's get up to 768. We should, our text should shoot up and boom, there it goes. Perfect. So that's what we want right there, you guys. That's what we want. And let's also say font, font bold like that. That's nice there. So this div here that is just holding our buttons, I'm gonna give it a class name and I'm just gonna say MY4 just to get a little bit of margin there. There we go. Now underneath the div that holds the buttons, I'm gonna say P tag. We're gonna say released. And then in here, we're gonna say movie, optional chaining, release underscore date. And that's what we're grabbing right here. Perfect. That's what we want right there. And let's give this class name. We'll say text gray um, 400, then text SM. And that's gonna be for small right there. Perfect. Next, we want the little overview, okay? And that's the overview, just a little quick uh, information about the movie. We're gonna put that right below. That's gonna say movie.overview. Okay, and let's go ahead and style this. This class name, we'll say width, full, and then I'm gonna copy the rest of this over just to save some time, but I'm gonna explain it to you guys. So what we're saying, width 100%, then like I said, anything above medium is gonna be 7%, 70% for the max width, and then until we get to the large breakpoint, if we hover, we see that's 10, 24 pixels. Then it's gonna be a max width of 50. Then up to XL, which is 1280, we're gonna have a max width of 35%, and then just text gray, 200. So as you can see, we're on a small breakpoint, so it spans 100% of the screen. As we get larger here, it kind of goes down less and less. So that's what we want right there. Now that's kind of a lot of text on the screen, uh, especially some of these are real long. Some of them are a lot shorter but um, we're, we're gonna use what's called truncating text. And what that means is kind of cut the, the text short and just kind of add a few dots. Kind of like when you see like a read more, click here to read more or something like that. So as we don't want to show all this information, it gets kind of jumbled up. And that way, if you get over here, you'll just cut it off after a certain number of characters and we can add in the, the dots right there. So <clears throat> the way we're gonna do that, we're just using some JavaScript for that. So we're gonna come over here and we don't actually have, we can just uh, comment that out so we don't need to see all this stuff in the in the developer tools down there. So what we're gonna say, we're gonna const, this is gonna be an arrow function. So we'll say truncate, truncate string, okay? This is gonna take a few values, it's gonna take a string and also I'm gonna say num. You can say, you can call it whatever you'd like. Then in here, what we're gonna say is if string.length is greater than the number that we pass in, then what we're gonna to wanna to do is return string.slice. And in here, what we're gonna say is zero num 
And then we're gonna say, we're gonna place it with these dots. Else, we just wanna return the string, okay? So let's go ahead and save that in those prettier formats, everything, so it looks nice and neat. And to use this, we're gonna scroll down, and I'm just gonna copy that. I'm just gonna cut it, right? And I'm leaving the curly bracket so we can use our JavaScript in there. And what we're gonna say is, we're gonna run this truncate string, then you pass in our two values, and our two values are the string and also the number. So I'm gonna paste in our string, then our number, for example, if I put 20, you can notice it only shows 20 characters, but we're gonna use 150 for the character length. And I think that is gonna be good right there. So there we have it, you guys. We have finished that main component, you guys. We've made it a good, uh, that was a good good accomplishment that we've made so far. Everything is looking great. Smash the like button if you feel like you're getting value out of this. So let's go ahead and close that main.js there. Uh, the nav bar, we're done with that for now. Um, for the home, let's leave this home open because next we can close this app.js, close the app index.js. Next, what we're gonna create is our rows. So let's create our row component. So command B, open up our, our sidebar here. In our components, I'm gonna create another file, row.jsx. RAFCE is gonna generate our functional component. <clears throat> now, the way we're gonna be reusing the row component, right? Because right here, upcoming row, popular row, trending row, top rated. This is one component, but we're passing through properties. That's how we can reuse the component. So just under main here, we're gonna say row. Go ahead and auto import that. Perfect. Just like that. Now, in this row, let's go back here. Let's pass through our properties first. So we're gonna have a title okay and this is going to be a string this can be whatever we want we can like make this first one i'm going to say upcoming so up we'll say upcoming just like that and then we're going to have something called fetch url because we're going to do all the data fetching inside each row component that we're going to map through or each through each component that we're going to map through our our movies so what we're going to say here we need to actually import our request, remember? So import requests from quests. There we go. And in here, what we can say is requests. And let me show you. We're saying requests because that's the name of the object. Dot, and then we can just grab any one of these. And we're gonna end up grabbing all of them. So for home, request dot that. And I'm just gonna paste that in. And I'm just gonna copy this down a few times just like that. So this next one, we can say popular, okay? Just like that, I think it should be one word. Let's change that. Popular, and then let's do uh, trending. And again, we'll change these, it needs to be popular. Popular, request popular, request trending. And then we're gonna get the uh, top rated and horror there. So this one's gonna be top rated, top rated. And then this last one is gonna be the horror. There we go. So let's look and see now. Uh, so we haven't actually added anything. So in our row component, let's go ahead and accept our properties here. So title and fetch fetch URL, perfect. Now inside of our row, we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff inside our row component, but it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna look awesome whenever we're done. So inside this row, okay, let's go ahead and I'm gonna leave this as an empty frag. I'm gonna add an H2 to start. And inside this H2 is gonna be our title, just like that. So let's go ahead and give this some styling because it's over there, we just can't see it because it's black text. So. What we're gonna say for this H2, and I'm gonna say uh, text, text white, so we can start seeing our text. And I'm gonna say font bold, and then anything above um, medium, I'm gonna say text XL, let's say P-4 for a padding of a four rem. So you can see these are all of our rows that we're gonna be using. And let's go ahead and add some more info in here so we can get to our images. So underneath the H2, we're gonna have another div. 
And in here, I'm gonna give this class name. We're gonna have a relative, we're gonna have flex items center, just like that, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Save that, just like so, perfect. Now, inside here, this next uh, div here is gonna be our slider. So I'm gonna create another div and I'm gonna give this an ID of slider, but I'm gonna put this inside curly brackets. So I'm just gonna put that in a string, just like that. And I'm gonna show you why I, um, I'm gonna show you why I did that here in just a minute here, okay? So, and let's go ahead and give some styling here. Mm -hmm. or no, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and, and I wanna show you. Let's go ahead and move on about here. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna map through all of our, all of our movies. So <clears throat> we actually need to make a request, was right now we don't have any data. So we actually need to make a request inside of our row component. And we're gonna do that right here, just above the return. So we're gonna have a uh, use state, right? So equal to use state. And this is just gonna be um, empty object. And basically this is gonna be the same what we did on the main. So I'm gonna run through this part. So we're gonna have movies and set, set movie, okay? And then we're gonna have our use effect. And inside our use effect, we're gonna have our Axios, right? So use effect, and that use effect takes in an arrow function. And again, let's add our dependency array, but we're gonna actually add in fetch URL. That way, whenever the URL, URL changes, the component will fire off again. So in here, Axios, go ahead and hit enter to make sure that imports. And uh, what we're gonna say is dot get. And then here we put our URL, but we're bringing in our URL with our, uh, you can go ahead and close that with our state. So right here, all we have to enter, we're passing in fetch URL, and that's the URL we're grabbing. So all we have to say is fetch URL, and that's actually gonna um, be the correct endpoint that we're looking for. So dot, dot, sorry, dot then, okay? And we're gonna get a response, but this goes inside an arrow function. And we're gonna set, sorry, set movies is what I wanna use. Set movies response dot data, and then remember we want to narrow it down because we're going to use results. And again, if we just console dot log this, we'll say movies. We should see this down here. Uh, use state got to import use state. Okay, there we go. So now looks like okay. Boom. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's what we want right there, you guys. Perfect. So we should see we're uh, console logging on each of our rows here. So we got five of these down here. So that's what we want right there. Perfect. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and map through. Now we have some data, let's map through this stuff. So we're gonna say, open up our curly brackets. We say movies.map, okay? And this is gonna say, map each through one as an item. And we're gonna give an ID as well. And sorry, not curly brackets, but parentheses right there. We just wanna render out a div just like that. Perfect. And what we can do, so inside this div here, um, let's have our images. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a class name so it kind of doesn't throw everything off the page. And so what we're gonna say for this here, I'm actually gonna copy this over because it's kind of a lot. Um, this isn't necessarily a CSS tutorial, but I just wanna show you, I'll explain what I'm doing here. So when we map through the data, this is gonna be what we're mapping through. The, 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 this width right here is each movie. So what we're saying is on small devices, we want 160 pixels, anything above the small bring point 200, medium's gonna be 240, and then large 280. We want this to be inline block, cursor pointer, whenever we hover, we wanna see a cursor. Then we want it to be relative, because we're gonna add some overlays on it. Relative, then a P-2 for the padding. So I hope that makes sense, you guys. Now in here, we're gonna have an image tag. And for our image, we're gonna be using that same backdrop path, right? So let's use that same trip here for our alt tag. So here we can just say item dot uh, title. There we go. Fresh, everything looking good. So, all right. And here, now let's grab that same endpoint on our main. So all I did was when you press control P, it opens up this box and you can search for uh, components or, or, or files rather up in here. So that's what I did to open that up. I had a few people asking me about the shortcuts I use. So I wanna make sure I explain those to you guys. So all I'm gonna grab here, 
is that right there. We can go ahead and close that. Now for row, let's open up some curly brackets and remember to put our back ticks. We're gonna use our template literal, okay? And instead of original this time, I'm gonna use what it was recommending, this W500 uh, with 500 there. So that's what I'm gonna use. So we'll just say with 500. And then in here, we use the, the dollar sign in our brackets for our template literal, right? And what we're gonna say is just item dot backdrop underscore path that yeah. perfect and uh let's go ahead and add some optional chaining just so we can avoid uh any errors if we get any errors there so we'll do the same right there boom that way we can avoid any problems before they occur so that's looking good you can see we're now mapping through all of our images um we just have tons of images here and they're not displayed how we want it but we are getting back data and it looks great so Let's go on and what I wanna do is add a little hover effect on each of these. So a hover and an overlay. So we're gonna put that, see, just below the image here. We'll say div here, and then let's give this a class name. And this is gonna be our overlay. So absolute, I'm gonna say top, top zero, left zero, width full, h full. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna give it on hover. On hover, we're gonna say, BG black, and then we're gonna say 80%. And I'm just gonna open this up so you can see a little bit better. And okay, so black ground, 80% opacity. And otherwise we want opacity to be a zero. And we'll say text white. And I think that should be good right there. Perfect, perfect. Now we need to do a few more things here. So inside of that right there, um, we also wanna say here, is our p tag and then here is going to be our item optional chaining here dot title okay see if we can see anything nothing yet here so let me make sure i get this right that's zero on hover black absolute perfect now i also want to add some styling to this image let's give that a place name i'm going to say width full h auto then we want that to be displayed as block perfect that's what we want right there and now absolute top zero, left zero, width full, full. Go hover, B. And also opacity zero. And on hover, we're gonna want the opacity to be, opacity to be 100. Now that should look a little bit better, perfect. So we can see our title in there as well. We still don't have anything uh, displaying properly, but so we have our title in there, we have our overlay. So let's work on our P tag here, let's give this a class name. And what we're gonna say, white space normal here. And then we're gonna say text, extra small, okay. And then anything above medium breakpoint, we're gonna say text small, font bold. We're saying flex, justify center, items center, height full, Height full and then text center. So text center, height's gonna be 100%, which is height full. Flex, justify center, item center, uh, font bold, and then some font sizing in there. So let's go ahead and save that so everything gets nice and formatted. Perfect, that's what we want right there. Now let's add a little heart, okay? So you can see this little heart, and whenever we click this, we want it to change back and forth. So let's go ahead and add those. And I'm just gonna copy these over. So what we're gonna be using here, we're gonna be using React icons. So what we're gonna say, import React icons here. So import curly brackets. And these are the two icons we're gonna be using, FA heart, FA regular heart. And you can import this from React icons. And then you can't just stop there, you have to add this little pretext. So whenever you're importing an icon, you just add that text afterwards there. Otherwise you'll get an error and it won't work properly. <clears throat> so what we're gonna use is FA heart here. And let's add some more state. Const, and we'll say like, whoa, like, set like, equal to use state. Say false, there we go. And in here, okay, this is gonna be another p tag in here, inside of our overlay, okay? And what we're gonna say is just, uh, we're gonna be using a ternary operator here, and we're gonna say if like, is true, then what we're gonna display is this icon. 
else, we're gonna say FA, sorry, the other icon, which is, whoa, but it's FA reg heart, I believe. Perfect, uh-huh. So, perfect, you see the hearts in there. Let's get them positioned correctly. So I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna drop that some. Click, hold my alt button down so I can type on multiple places here. And what we're gonna say is I'm gonna give it a uh, class name. You don't need to do any sizing here yet. Class name, absolute, and we're gonna say top four, left four, and then text gray, and we'll say, say 300, see how that looks. Boom, so there we go, that's what we want right there. And then um, we'll come back, oh, I know we set that state, but we're not gonna use that until we incorporate Firebase. So everything is looking good so far, and uh, let's go ahead and see. Just a quick recap here. So we have our data that we're bringing in, we're passing in our title and our fetch the URL there. So we're making our API call inside of this use effect using Axios, and we're grabbing the fetch URL there. And then we're putting this into our movies state. And then there, we're just mapping through, right here, we're just mapping through each uh, movie or each piece of our state. But what I wanna do is just kind of simplify things. Instead of having all this, um, all this code here, we can refine this a bit more and we'll map through another component and we'll just call it a movie component. So let's create a new file in the components folder called movie.jsx. Go ahead and hit save RAFCE to get our functional component there. Then all I'm gonna do is this div here, I'm just gonna select that. I'm gonna cut it, okay? And in here, I'm just gonna say movie, just like that. And then in here, I can say item equal to item or whatever you wanna call it, but I'm just gonna pass in all of our data. So in here, I'm just gonna replace this. I'm just gonna paste what we copied. And uh, in here, we just have to take in item. And that should be all we need to do. So movie's not defined. We probably just didn't import it. Boom, control space bar, let's import it. And we're gonna go ahead and give this a key because React does like uh, keys. So key ID, that way it has a unique key. So <clears throat> it's not defined, that's because we moved everything over. So um, that's okay. Let's just, uh, we'll cut that out and put it over here. And we'll have to import our use state. There we go. And let's go back here and we'll just cut these out and just move that over on over here. There we go. That should take care of all of our errors. Let's see, let's refresh. Perfect, that's looking good. Don't worry about that one. We'll come back and fix that later on. So looking good. Uh, we still need to go back to our row so we can actually uh, display this properly. So, but I think that's it for the movie component, okay? So I'm gonna drop that sidebar back down and we can close that component for now. Now for our row component, what we do wanna do is um, add in our styling for our row. So this is our ID slider here. This surrounds our row, it's a parent container. So what we're gonna say is just give this a class name and we're gonna say, for our ID, we're gonna say width full, height full, object, sorry, overflow. Overflow X scroll, there it is, okay. Now white space, no wrap, we don't often see that there. Scroll smooth, because we want everything to scroll nice and smooth. And then we're gonna say scroll bar hide just like that. And I think that's all we're gonna need to put. Um, we are gonna need to make this relative actually. Everything will display properly. And that, boom, there we go. Look at that guys, smash that like button. Whoa, smash that like button you guys. This is looking good right here, look at that. So let's open this up. Boom, look at that, Netflix you guys, look at that. And I'm scrolling on my trackpad, how awesome is that dude? Look at that nice hover effect. We have the title there. We're gonna be able to save this into our database here in just a little bit when we connect Firebase. That is looking awesome, you guys. Um, but one thing, you know, I'm on a trackpad right now so I can slide through here, but if I'm on a desktop using a mouse, I don't have any way to, to cycle through the movies. So we're gonna add these React icons and the ability to slide through our rows. So let's drop this back down, okay? And what we're gonna do, let's we'll leave it like that. Drop it down a little bit further. And we're gonna use React icons again to add in our um, add in our icons over here. So on our row, we're just on a row, let's add in some more icons we're gonna be using. So 
we see import yeah, from react icons and in here what we're going to be using i'm going to copy them over so md chevron left okay then md chevron right there we go and remember like i said you just add that pretext after here was right now we're going to get an error but if we just add slash md that's all we need to do just right there so for these buttons i'm going to put them outside of this um slider container there that slider div so i'm going to paste that just like right there and this one is going to go on the bottom side now i'm going to type hold my alt button so i can type it a couple places now we actually have access to a size property and this is with the react icons package and i'm just going to say size 40 just like that now let's give some class names here so class name again we're styling both of these here at the same time and what we're going to say is a bg white okay we want rounded full this is going to give a nice full um little round button boom just like that rounded full we'll have absolute the opacity by default i want to be 50 and then on hover we want opacity um let's say 100 i believe would be good and then um what we also want to do also want to do over here when i say sorry uh still need to type two places cursor pointer cursor pointer and z10 so it's always on top there we go now so we actually want these to uh, be hidden and then only show whenever we hover on the row and so where are we at here i'm going to say just real quick so we can say hidden okay and then we only want these to show whenever we hover on the row. So the way we do that to have these show without hovering on them specifically, but we want them to hover, to show whenever we hover over the parent div. So we just need to add to this right here, this parent div. We're just going to add group just like that. And then we can go into our right here. We can say group. Then when hover. And we'll just show uh, block, I believe, should be good. Or flex, there one, boom. So that is what we want right there. Let's do the same thing, group hover block. I'm gonna put that right there. So now we cannot see any of the icons. Now we hover on the row, you now see the icon showing up. That's perfect right there. So let's go over here uh, for this bottom icon. With full, boom, there we go, BG. Mm -mm -mm. So we need this one to show on the right side. So let's just say right zero. And this one needs to be left, left zero. So let's have a look. Boom. There we go. Now, oh, this needs to be the right button. That one's turned around. Boom. There we go. I thought I fixed that. There we go. All right, how are we looking? Look at that, you guys. Now we can just, oh, we gotta hook them up though, right? So how do we actually scroll through these things whenever we, whenever we click on the button? So we're gonna use some JavaScript for that. So what we're gonna use, we're gonna put that right here and we're actually just type over that. We don't need to console.log that anymore. And what we're gonna say is, let's see, const, and we'll say slider, or let's see, let's define, we're gonna have two functions, a slide left and a slide right. And they're gonna be arrow functions. So we're gonna say slide left. They're not gonna take in any values here. And in here, we have to say, we're gonna be using const, right? To define our uh, our slider. We're gonna grab it by the ID. So we're just gonna say var uh, slider equal to document dot get element by ID. And we're grabbing the slider here, okay? And then in here, we'll say var um, slider. Yes, here we go slider equal to scroll left sorry slider dot scroll left apologies dot scroll left equal to slider dot scroll left minus 500. so let's go ahead and save that and we're just going to copy this thing down and we'll just use the same thing where we we'll say slide right and then even though we're sliding right we're going to leave all of this the same except for this minus we're just gonna change that to positive right there. And then let's go ahead and hook this up. So 
slide left and slide right are the two functions we want to run. So on the to slide left, we're gonna say on click, we want to run the slide left, okay? And then down here, on click, we wanna run slide right. The R is capitalized. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's see if it works. Look at that, you guys, boom. Everything is looking clean, all our rows here. And uh, that's gonna that that's gonna be a problem. So I just forgot about this. Actually, this kind of stumped me here, and I had to ask a friend to help me out with this. So basically, whenever we hit the to slide the row, our first row is the only the only row that slides, and that's because we don't have any unique IDs to for for React to determine which row we're referring to. So the way we're gonna change that, let's go back into our home, right? And in here, I'm gonna add. A, I'm gonna click a Alt here. I can type of multiple lines. What I'm just gonna say, you can say whatever you like. I'm just gonna say row ID. We wanna give this a unique uh, a unique number there, unique key. So I'm just gonna say one, this one's gonna be two, three, four, and five. As long as they're unique, that's all we need. But this row ID, we're gonna hold on to that, okay? Then back over to this row, we need to, so we're passing that in as a property. So we need to bring that in, and we're gonna bring it in right here. There we go. And then we actually need to add this here. So slider plus row ID. And this is what it's grabbing, okay? And then we're gonna add it in right on our row right here. And that is why we wrap this in curly brackets, okay? So now, give it a save. When we scroll through, everything is working properly. Dude, smash that like button. Look at this, we have a full UI Netflix completed in probably about maybe an hour and a half. I'm not sure how long it's been, right around an hour. Look at that. We've completed the front end build of Netflix using React.js and Tailwind CSS. So are you ready to connect the back end? We're gonna start hooking up Firebase. Now is the time. So let's move on to Firebase. Uh, we're gonna be using context for our API managing our state see if a user is logged in or not. So everything's looking good. Smash the like button, you guys, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that. So <clears throat> what we're gonna add next is uh, Firebase, right? So let's cruise on over. We can actually probably just close out this TMDB stuff. Let's go to firebase.google.com. We don't need to rest that stuff there. We're gonna click on get started, okay? You do need a Google account for this. Don't worry about these other projects, but it is free, you guys, as long as you stand under the limit, which we will be. So what we're gonna say here is, um, here's the name of the project, Netflix. I'm gonna say dash React YT for YouTube. Go ahead and start. Now, we don't need to use Google Analytics for this. Don't worry about that. Now, what we're gonna need to do is create a Firebase, a, a Firebase file here. So inside the, in, the source folder, new file, Firebase, firebase.js. Some people call it firebase.config, whatever. As long as a little Firebase uh, file on there, it's gonna do. Okay, so it is ready, boom. There we go. So this is our project right here. I'm gonna open that up a bit. And what you see right here, this page right here is just the console for Firebase. So what we wanna do, we're gonna be working with uh, authentication, but before we do that, we need to connect this project to our application here, our application to this project here in Firebase. So. This is a web project here. If you're using Apple, iOS, Android, but like I said, we're using the web. So let's do that here. It wants us to name it again, Netflix, Netflix YouTube, just like that. Don't worry about the hosting. We're gonna come back and do that here a little bit later. So let's go ahead and get started. Boom, that's all we need, look at this. So NPMI install Firebase. We've already installed Firebase, but if you hadn't, go ahead and run that. I'm using Yarn, so just say Yarn add. Firebase, MPMI, Firebase, uh, if you're using NPM. So next, what we can do is just copy this, okay? We're just gonna paste that inside of our Firebase folder, just like that. So now you see, and again, you guys create your own account with Firebase. Don't use any of my keys. I'm gonna put this, um, I'm gonna put this project in the description below, a link to my GitHub. So feel free to clone it. If you wanna use everything, that's fine. But if you just clone it and install all the dependencies and hit start, it's not going to work. The front end's going to work, but Firebase will not work because I'm deleting all of my keys after this. So please get your own. But, and since we're gonna deploy this after the build, since we're gonna deploy it, we don't want any of our private uh, keys out in the public. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hide all these in a .env file 
and um, let's go ahead and do that right now okay so I'm gonna create a new file and this is outside the source folder okay this is just in our main uh, main uh, folder here I say dot env and what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna just uh, copy this over um, so kind of save some time save some time uh, typing here but don't worry about these keys they're not gonna work either just get rid of those but what do you want to type here what's important at least is react all caps here react underscore app underscore firebase api key and then we're going to just kind of go down the list so what i'm going to do i'm just going to grab this here so i'm just going to grab that copy and we're just going to paste it here as the api key does not need to be in quotes it won't work if it's in quotes it's not a string here in this env file this is going to be the auth domain next is the project id after that we're looking for storage bucket message sender id and the app id so that's what we want to do there now to have access to these let's go back to firebase <clears throat> and what we're going to say get rid of all this here we're going to say process dot env and then we're looking for forget what it is <laughs> process dot env react underscore app app underscore firebase what i call it api key and in fact i'm going to go ahead and copy that over Don't worry, I'm just pasting it here so I can so I can copy it. I'm gonna delete it here in a minute. But what we wanna say here, I'm just gonna copy this actually. This domain. So let's just delete all these here. Boom, there we go. This is worth the wait, you guys. I promise you, you don't wanna, you definitely don't wanna uh, leave these codes out for the world to see, so definitely recommend adding in the, the env file here so i just hold it all again so we can type on multiple lines here and we'll say process dot env dot okay and now we've already got that top one this one's to be auth domain there we go comma and we're gonna grab the project id go ahead and do that there the storage bucket boom there we go this message cinder in this message app right there boom all right so let's go ahead and get rid of that unsightly perfect so that is what we want right there you guys um you need to restart your server once you do the .env file so make sure you restart your server otherwise you're gonna get lots of errors so and nothing's gonna work properly so now that we have our server restarted perfect okay so we're not actually connecting fire we are connected to firebase but we haven't added authentication or anything else and we're gonna do that we're actually going to do that right now so if you're ready to get started with authentication we're going to be using context api okay context api with uh with firebase here to add in uh, all of our state to see if a user is logged in or not so what we're going to do next is continue to the console okay and let's click on authentication and now we can just click get started and here there's all different ways you can be authenticated using firebase i have another video i'll put in the description below if you want to see i did a video on how to sign in with google you can sign in with pop-up or redirect to google it's really really cool stuff i'll put a link in the description but for this uh build we're just going to use email and password spill my drink so enable save there we go and that is all we need to do for that so as you can see here we have a blank table no users we haven't created any users yet so what we need to do is actually add in and i'm gonna show you how to do this we're gonna cruise all over to the docs here and let's say build and we're looking at authentication okay you click down here web now get started we want to import the uh, sdk software development kits here for us so what we can do is just actually copy this and we're going to import it actually says right here add sdks for firebase products you want to use we want to use authentication so that's the authentication one we're going to use and then we need to add this here at the bottom. Perfect. But we actually need to export this here because we're gonna be using this outside of this file. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna create a context folder. So let's go over here to source folder. 
and create another directory here called context. And inside context, we're going to create a folder called, I'll we'll say auth context dot js perfect that's what we want to do right there now there's a lot of stuff we're going to use in this uh, file let's go ahead and get it uh let's go ahead and get it set up for now so we're going to import a few things from react we're going to grab the create context okay we're going to grab use context we're going to grab use effect we're also going to be using the use state okay so first we have to create our context so we're going to say const auth context equal to create context yeah, boom there we go perfect and then in here what we're going to say is export function this is going to be our, our context right auth context provider it's going to take in some children okay and it, down here we're going to return and what we're going to return here the bottom here let's see auth context dot provider return children and this is going to have some values in it but we're going to come back later and uh add that add that in later so what we need to do also is kind of wrap everything in the context provider first we need to export this export uh another function and in here we're going to user auth and return use context auth context perfect so the way context works we actually have to wrap our entire application so i'm going to go to our app.js and um <clears throat> i do want to include the nav bar in here because we want our nav bar our component needs to have access to the um, to our context because we're going to be able to conditional render our buttons whether you log in or log out whether or not a, a, a user is logged in so auth context provider boom just like that and again we want everything to be in there so all just slide it up there save it so it gets all formatted nice and pretty perfect so now our context is set up so inside our context is where all of our logic is going to be for signing in and out of accounts um creating new accounts an on off state change to see if a user is currently logged in or not all that is going to be inside of this context and what we're going to need inside of here, we're going to need some stuff from Firebase. We need import. So from Firebase, we're going to need this uh, auth right there. So let's grab that auth from Firebase. There we go. And then from Firebase, but this isn't from the Firebase file, but from the uh, Firebase dependency that we installed. Firebase slash auth. There we go. And in here, we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need the, um, we're gonna need to create a new user with email and password. See, so create new user email and password. We're gonna be able to sign in new email with email and password. We're gonna need the sign out method. And we're gonna need on auth state changed. So that's all we're gonna need for now. And we're actually gonna put those in here. There we go. So first off, we're gonna need some state, okay? So open up our brackets here, equal to use state. And we're gonna set this to an object, not a string. And we'll have user, set user, there we go. Now first let's do the sign up. So what we're gonna do with sign up is we're gonna need a create a user with an email and password. So let's do function, I'm gonna call this sign up there we go and this is going to take in email and password all right there we go and inside here we want to return the create user with email and password and we're going to need auth email and password that's all we need to do but we actually need to pass this through remember this is going to take a value we don't have that in there yet so value and we need to throw all the things we want available to all the other components which is the sign up we're also going to want access to the user state just like that let's go ahead and save and it's nice and formatted for us so that's looking pretty good right there now that's a sign up function let's go ahead and also add a sign out so it's a function and this is going to be log log out there we go and in here we just want to return 
sign out auth and let's do a sign in as well so we have sign up log out and this is going to be sign in we'll say log in email and password we say return sign in with email and password we need to grab auth from firebase auth and then email password and then also we need to do our on auth state change i'm going to keep that at the bottom here so function and that's actually let's wrap this in a use effect so use effect that way it's only going to run it's going to check once uh whenever the component mounts to see if a user is logged in or not and we're going to say const unsub Subscribe, okay, equals to on auth state changed, and we need the auth, and then we're gonna have an arrow function here, and this is gonna take in the current user, okay? And this is gonna set user to current user, okay? Then down here, we're just gonna return an arrow function to uh, unsubscribe as a method. Go ahead and save that. I don't see any errors. That's a miracle, you guys. So go ahead and save that. Now we have to um, pass these as values in to our auth context provider. So sign up, um, log in, and then we have log out. And I believe that's all we're going to need. That's all we need for now. So everything is looking good make sure we don't have any errors come back and fix those that's not a big deal look everything's looking nice so now we have all of our firebase connected we don't have a sign-in page yet so let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and create our our uh, sign-in page our sign-up page so let's do that first here so for our pages what we want here login.jsx RAFC is going to get our functional component. I'm going to go ahead and create our sign up.jsx. And let's do also our account.jsx. Boom, there we go. Perfect. So for our login page, let's go ahead and get our all of our, sorry. RAFCE there. Now RAFCE. Perfect. Go ahead and close that down. So for our app, let's create some routes too. So a route path, and we want one for login. And this is gonna be element. We're gonna display the login element. Close that off. And again, we wanna do this for sign up. This is gonna be the sign up component. Then also we want to have a route path to Count. Go. Boom. Whoa, not MD count tree. That's not what we want right there. Okay. Perfect. Now we need to import this. It's not one to. Okay, that's cool. Not one to import for some reason. No big deal. We'll go ahead and import account from pages slash. Count. There we go. All right. Perfect. So go ahead and close that. Everything looks good there. We have a sign in, login. You know what? Let's go ahead and go to our nav bar and kind of create some, some routes here. So on this sign up button, go ahead and add. Let's do this too. For our Netflix button, our Netflix logo, we want a link to be able to sign in. So we want this to run to our homepage. We'll shove that up there. Go ahead and save. And for this down here, Link is not fine. That's right. We link to hmm, link to and this button we want to have to log in. There we go. And this one here is gonna be linked to sign up. Perfect. All right. Go ahead and import that link there. And everything is looking nice. If we hover on this, see, we navigate to the sign up, to the login page. There we go, and back to the home page. That's what we want right there. So let's close this, close the app.js, close this.emb file. Don't need Firebase, don't need the row. 
don't need that home either. So inside of our sign up, um, inside of our sign up component, let's go ahead and create that there. So what do we want to do here? Let's go ahead and say class name. We'll say width, width full H screen. There we go. I actually want to wrap this side fragment just like that, I like using those. So that's going to go up in there. Perfect. Now for our background, stretch out a little bit here for my knees. Sorry. For my background, I actually want to use uh, the Netflix background. So let's just cruise on over to Netflix. And I'm just going to right click here and just say copy image address. I'm going to leave that open for now in case we need it. So for our image, image, I'm just going to give it a little slash there. And I'm just going to paste that in. Okay. Boom, there we go, looking good. Now let's give this some styling, okay? So class name, and I actually don't want it to be uh, displayed at all on, on on mobile devices, so I'm gonna say hidden. Then anything above small, we want to display block, absolute width full, width full object cover, okay? Then that's all we need to do, take up the full width and height of the screen, and I want an overlay on this thing, okay? So div, and in this div, let's give a class name so we can add in overlay to be absolute and then for our overlay you see bg see if we need that bg black we'll say 60 for 60 cent percent opacity i'm just gonna use fixed instead top top zero left left zero and um with full h screen and that's saying h screen remember height 100 viewport heights so that's looking good right there on smaller devices it should just be black boom there you go looking clean man i like that i like that all right so below that div next what we're gonna have <clears throat> so we're gonna have another div here and this one is gonna be class name we're say fixed okay width full width full um ex four so padding on the x-axis of four PY 24 and then Z 50 Z index of 50. Now we want to have an overlay. See a little overlay over our form just like that. And then we scroll down. It's just going to be a form on a black background. So let's do that right now in here. And so I have a div here and this is going to be a class name. We'll say max width and let's open up our brackets. So we can put some custom values in there. I'm going to say this one's going to be 450 pixels. Uh, height of 600 600 pixels there and now we're going to say mx auto bg black 75 75 percent and then everything inside text white perfect that's what we want right there you guys and then let's have another div in here let's go ahead and save so it gets all nice then class name and this is going to be a max max width of 320 pixels what I want MX auto P Y 16 there we go now let's have our h1 in here we sign up save perfect that's what we want right there let's go ahead and style this thing I'm gonna say class name text 3xl font bold smash the like button if you like tailwind if this is your first time using tailwind let me know what you think of it and uh in the comments below i, I know you're saving a lot of time using tailwind especially uh especially once you get used to all the styling it's incredible so under the h1 uh we're actually gonna have our form itself right and so our form we're just gonna have two inputs and a, a button we're not gonna be using any labels and we don't need the form action so we're just gonna have an input and this is gonna be email okay and we don't need any name or id or anything like that and then input it's gonna be type password there we go don't need that let's just add a placeholder that says password and placeholder email just like that and we're getting some errors down here show auto we can do autocomplete i guess it wants us to do that autocomplete and we'll just say email and anything else password current password so auto you don't have to do this i'm just trying to minimize some of those alerts down there 
So it wants us to say current password. There we go. All right, just some recommendations here. Should refresh that, looking good. Okay, and then, I don't know why it moved that one and not the other one, that's cool. But let's do a button that says sign up, okay? And let's go ahead and style the button here. And for the button, the styling's gonna be pretty easy. Class name, BG red, and we're gonna use 600 PY3. And we want a margin Y of six, uh, rounded and then font bold. Let's see how that goes. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Now, <clears throat> let's see here. For our form, let's give our form some styling here. So class name, we're gonna say width full flex flex column and then py4 and next let's grab on to perfect and nice okay let's styling here so um add the styling at the same time so again just hold alt and then we can type in multiple places here class name now for our inputs i'm just gonna say p-3 padding 3 my2 so we have a margin of 0.5 rem on the top and bottom there and that's looking pretty good and already off the bat there so we'll just say bg Gray, I want to say 600, rounded, rounded, I might even lighten that up just a bit, I actually had it darker, but yeah, I will leave it like that, yeah, what the heck, that's looking good right there, uh, dang, look at that, looking good, okay, so what we want to add, just a couple P tags down here. We'll be done with the form, then we'll hook everything up so it's working uh, working properly. So inside of the form, just below this button here, what I wanna add is a div here. And inside this div, we're gonna have a P tag and we're gonna have an input of checkbox. There we go. And again, let's just get rid of this. And we'll just say, remember, remember me, something like that. Go. And then also we're gonna have Another P tag that says, um, uh, need help. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay. And then we'll say class name. And this is for right below. We'll say margin, uh, sorry, flex, then item center is all we need. Flex, there we go. By between. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now on this here, let's just give class name, we'll say uh, margin right two, there we go. All right, looking good, look at that, look at that, nice. And we can change the color there. Yeah, let's change this text here. We can drop down the text a little bit. So I'm center there, uh, text small and text gray 600. There we go, perfect. Looks good right there. Now we can also add just this text down here. Already, already subscribed to Netflix, then click here to sign in, okay? And we're gonna put that just below here. And what we're gonna say is, let's actually give this a, a span. Okay, already um, subscribed to Netflix. Sign in, okay? And that looks good. And we'll just give this class name um, PY4. Class name text gray 600. Let's see how that looks right. Perfect. And instead of a sign in, what we can just say, just give this a link to log in, just right there. Boom. And we'll just move that up a notch. Go ahead and save. Link. Okay. Let's import that. Boom. How about that? Dang, look at that. It looks nice, man. Nice. There we go. We can give this a little more padding if you want. That looks good, though. Or we'll just give this a little bit more, um, a little bit more padding. So, let's see here. Why? See how that looks. Boom. There we go. Man, looking nice. All right, you guys. So, that is our sign up component. Let's just go ahead and copy all of this. So just copy that div right there all the way up. And let's just paste that in here. Now we're gonna go through, change a few things. So let's just first get that imported. Okay. 
Now let's cruise over to the sign in page. Okay. Now we're on sign in page. Let's update this because really it's going to be most all of the same code, just a little bit different. So sign in email password is going to stay the same. Uh, we could probably change this button to sign in. Remember me need help already subscribed. We'll say, Hey, um, new to Netflix. And we're going to redirect to sign. Whoa. If you're new to Netflix, then you want to sign up. We'll just click here. New to Netflix, sign up. It should take us to the sign in page. Boom, there we go. How about that? You're looking clean. All right. So, how do we actually sign in to Netflix? Well, we've already done the hard part, which is adding in our context, right? So really all we need to do now, let's start with our sign up here. All we need to do, and actually I'm gonna console log something here. Right in here, I'm just gonna say, tell you what, let's do it in our nav bar. Nav bar, we'll come back in a minute. So for our sign up, let's go ahead and log in, okay? And I'm gonna go over here to our user table. We have no users in there. So let's go ahead and do this. So here we want to import, and this is our sign up. Okay, we're going to import the user auth from context slash auth context. There we go. Now in here, what we're going to have, we're going to have some state. We're going to have a lot of state, and then also we need our context as well. So let's just I'm sorry here. Const user equal to user auth. Okay. Just like that, perfect. And we're also gonna want the sign up. That's not what we want what you want there. We're looking for yeah, sign up from user. So go ahead and make sure that's what we're looking for. Sign up. Uh so but let's go back here and finish adding our state in here. That's what we want though. Perfect, right there. So let's add our state. We're gonna have const, and then we're gonna have um, let me use state here. It's gonna empty to uh, sorry, empty uh, string, not object. And let's go ahead and copy that down. So for this one, it's gonna be email and set email, okay? Because we want to take the values that the user enters and password and set password, okay? So now, and then we're gonna have a handle submit. So like const handle submit or whatever you like to call it. it doesn't really matter. That's what I'm calling it here. And in here, this is actually gonna be a uh, asynchronous function here. And we don't want the form to be submitted, so we're gonna prevent the default. So make sure you pass in that event there. Event.prevent default. We don't want the page to be submitted every time we um, submit our form. Let's import the use state. There we go. Put our sign up here. And what we want to do, this is actually gonna be an asynchronous function, okay? So we'll say async here. And then here, we're gonna say try catch block, right? So in here, catch error, and we'll just console.log any error. And then here, we want to await, and we're already bringing in the sign up function, and that's what we want. Sign up, and what we just need is the email and password. So now, let's go down here and connect our state here, as well as our, as our form submitting. So this is our form. We'll say on submit and on submit, we want to run the handle submit function here. And then for our input, this is for our email input, we want to say on change. Now on change, what we want to grab is there to set an arrow function here to set the email to the event dot target dot value. Okay. And I'm just going to copy that, right? Save a little bit of time, paste that in there, save it. But instead of email, let's say set password that is all we need to do so let's try this thing out and see if we get any errors all right let's go and try and sign up i'm going to create test at test.com the password is going to be password and before we do that let's let's go ahead and let's just try it oh okay so we submitted did anything happen let's go here let's refresh yes so now we successfully created a new user. You can see it inside our user table. Yeah, smash that like button, you guys. That's how powerful Firebase is. That's how easy it is to set up a backend with Firebase.
Now, um, once a user logged in, it doesn't make any sense to just sit here on the signup page. What we want to happen is actually sign in and you get redirected automatically to the homepage. So what we're gonna do here is import with React Router DOM. We just wanna use navigate, there we go. Or sorry, don't add any, any brackets there. Just use navigate. Then here, what we can say is const navigate equal to use navigate, there we go. Just like that. And then here, after we sign in, what we want to do is navigate to the homepage. So let's try this again. We're already signed in. I want to do, I'm just going to delete. I'm just going to delete this guy, right? So boom, he's deleted. And real quick, you guys, before we sign in and test out this navigate, I want to do some conditional rendering, which means on this nav bar here, if user is not signed in, I want them to see, just like it reads now, the sign in or sign up. If the user is logged in, I want it to say account right here and then give them the option to log out. So let's go into our nav bar, okay? And what we wanna have in here, we first wanna pull in our context, right? So import user auth, right, from auth context. Then we need to grab our user to find our user. So const, oh, sorry, uh, this goes in curly brackets. So user, and we're also gonna bring in the logout that's equal to the user auth. There we go, user auth function. Okay, so what we want to do here, we're gonna use some, uh, let's do this first of all. I wanna console.log user and it should say null right because we're not logged in so now let's go ahead and test this out to see if we get redirected to the home page summon again and we don't have any users in our database because i just deleted them so test at test.com password we should be redirected yes we're now redirected and if you look if you look down here in our console our user is now changed and this is our user object, okay? So you now have access to all this data in, in uh, Firebase. And you can see that is our email, boom, right there. So what I can say in here, uh, for example, if I change this to user.email, it should just now display our email of the logged in user, okay? So we can go ahead and comment that out. And what we wanna do down here for this div right here, I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna cut it actually. So. So open up our curly brackets, we can use some JavaScript. And what I want to say is ternary operator, we're going to check to see if a user, we're using optional training here, dot email, right? If that is true, okay, if that's true, we're going to display, and I'm just going to paste this in here. We're going to change that. Else we want to display this, right? So this is what, this is correct. But if a user is logged in, we actually don't want this, I don't want this to be a, there can be a button's fine but I want this to say account, okay? And this should be, since we're actually logged in, this should re reflect properly. Say account, perfect. And I want this to say log out. So otherwise it should show login. So let's just log out. We don't have any logout functionality. Let's go ahead and add the logout functionality. A lot to do here. So let's add a log out here. We've already pulled it in here from our context. So I'm gonna say it's an arrow function. I'm gonna call it handle, handle log out. Okay, we're not taking anything in here. It is gonna be an asynchronous function though. Async, and then what we wanna say here is await. Sorry, this would be a try catch here. And catch, oh, here, any errors. Go and what we can say is await log out just like that, and we don't need anything else. Uh oh, try to catch what's going on. There we go. Go ahead and save that, and that should be all we need to do there. And that's all we need. And once we log out, we probably want to navigate. Let's import that as well use navigate once we log out we want uh users to be automatically redirected to the home page okay just like so we'll just say navigate okay 
So now we are logged in. Now when we log out, this should log us out. Well, once we connect it. So just this button here. And so we actually don't even need this to be a link. We don't want it to be a link because it's just going to log us out. And we're going to say on click. We're going to run the handle logout function. Go ahead and save that. Prettier takes care of the formatting. Let's log out. Now this should say, once, once we log out here, it should just say sign in and sign up. And let's have a look. Hey, there we go. Is that right? Perfect. There we go. All right. So for our account, that's perfect. Okay. Sign in. Let's do take care of the sign in first. Okay. So now everything's working properly. Let's go into our sign in. Okay. And let's go ahead and see use navigate. We're going to need that one there. And we're also going to need our context. So let's import. You, no. No. User auth. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to copy this over because we're going to use all of this here. Let's just copy this whole thing. Okay. Copying this whole thing from the sign up. So we're going to use the const, this use state, email, and uh, set email. We're going to use the password state. We're going to use this, but instead of sign up, we're going to say log in because that's what we passed through here. Log in. That's what we're grabbing right here, just to be clear. So log in and then handle submit. We can leave the same, but instead of sign in, we want log in. And that should be all we need to do. You state is not defined. Okay. So let's see here. Let's sign in and remember test at test.com and password. We should be logged in. I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to write P-A-S-S. -S and let's see, I'm going to just comment out that right quick. Let's see. Test at test.com. Pass. And we should be getting an error. Oh, we got a print E dot prevent default. Here. Oh, I forgot. We need to add our on submit there. Uh, handle submit. There we go. And on change. This is for our email. What we want to add is vent set email. Whoa. Yeah. Well, that's right. Target dot value. And this is going to be arrow function. Let's, let's fix that. And then this for our password on change. that target value. So go ahead and save that. Let's check this out. So test at test.com pass boom. And so you see, we have an error down here, R wrong password. And I did that on purpose and uh, that's great. But for our user, we're not seeing the, not letting our user know that we have any errors. That's not very user friendly. So what we can do is actually set in some error state. So I'm gonna say const error set error. And that's going to be equal to the use state. We're going to let that be an empty string. I spelled that there. Perfect. So what I want to say here is we'll say, um, not there. We're going to set error to an empty string. And then down here, set error to error. Let me say error dot message. Okay. And then we can come down here and we want to render this out on the screen. I'm gonna put it just before, before, uh, below our H1 here. So we can use our ternary operator again. And what we can say if error is true, okay? So if error is true, what we wanna show is a P tag else be null. And in here, what we're gonna say is, let's see, error just like that let's just give this class name let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and see what it's looking like so far so we can style this thing test.com pass boom so there you go we have our error cool that looks good that looks pretty good right there so we can actually just probably leave it like that if you, hey we can just do this we'll say p uh, mm, p3 bg red 400 let's see how that looks Boom. Yeah. So that way you can big, uh, warning just like that. Perfect. We'll say two. 
So that was a good right there. Now let's get the actual right password this time. Log in. Oh, we need to we need to navigate to our homepage. Sign in. Boom, there we go. And now we have our account page. So what we want to do next is actually make this account page a protected route. So we actually have to be logged in in order to view that, that uh, page here. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna be adding another component here. It's a protected protected route here. So let's go into our component and I'm just gonna name that protected route.js, okay? Let's say, change this over to React here. RAFCE is gonna generate our functional component here. Now we need to import a couple things. We're gonna import, we're gonna need the navigate, okay? Equal to, or sorry, from, React router DOM, there we go. And we're also gonna need our context. So user auth, there we go. And this is actually gonna take in children, okay? And then what we're gonna say in here, what we're gonna say if user is not true, then what we wanna do is return and um, to be a navigate, uh, okay? navigate to the home page it'd be a self-closing tag else return children and we can just get rid of all that just like that so go ahead and save and oh we forgot their user auth so let's do that right here const user equal to user auth just like that so we have a method there perfect that is what we want right there, you guys. Everything's looking good. Now, we're not done yet with the protected route. We just have to make one last final thing here in our app.js. And basically, we just have to wrap our account or anything that you want to be protected. Ah, protected route. We just have to wrap it inside there. So let's just cut that. And we're just gonna move it inside of our protected route. So go ahead and save. Now, that's all we need to do. Now, um, we're on our account page because we're authenticated, okay? So next, let's log out and try to go to our account page. And what it should do is just bounce us right back to the home page. Check, and boom, there it works. How about that, you guys? Check that out, perfect. And if we log back in, test at test.com, password, we should be able to just hang out in the account page. Perfect. That's what we want, you guys. Hope you like what you're getting so far. Smash that like button. Uh, we have now finished authentication with Firebase JS in this Netflix project. But what we do have left is uh, we want to use Firestore in Firebase. And what Firestore is, is cloud storage for Firebase. So to get started with that, you can close app.js. Uh, we can close the, the sign up here, close the protected route, this login. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we can close the nav bar. We're going to leave open the auth context. Okay. We're not going to need that anymore. Or sorry, we're gonna, we are going to need that, but let's cruise on over to Firebase. Okay. We can see our user in here. Now let's open this up. And what we're going to look for is Firestore database. Okay. We're not using the real time. We're using Firestore, which is cloud storage. It's awesome to use you guys, super powerful. So let's start here in test mode. And all this is, is the read and write permissions. So basically it's saying within 30 days, you don't have to change anything. Anybody can read and write to your database. So that's all we need to do. Click enable. Now just make sure that, uh, sorry, the cloud Firestore location is the closest to your uh, location. It should be selected by default. So this literally only takes a couple minutes here, maybe less. So there, it's already done. And that's all we need to do. We do not, do not need to do any more configuration past the provisioning of the, the, of the database. So cruising back over here to our docs, we're in authentication. Let's go into the cloud Firestore. And in here, introduction, let's do get started. Now we just need to add the Firestore SDK, okay? So we can come down here. And we're just gonna use that get Firestore right there. So again, we're using version nine, the modular version nine. Um, this came out probably within the last 12 months for sure, probably less than that actually. So if you see it done different ways, it's kind of like the older way of doing things. So like I said, we're using version nine here. So what we need is just that cloud Firestore right there. So we do need to go back into our Firebase. 
we go. And we just need to add it right there with our other SDKs. And then we just need to export const db equals to get firestore. There we go. And just our app, just like that. Just make sure that's correct here. Yeah, db get firestore app. And again, we need to export that because we're not gonna, we're gonna be putting all the logic in our context here. So here is what we need to do. And this is actually really easy, you guys. We just need to go in here and import a couple things from uh, Firebase. We can actually add, now add DB, okay, from Firebase, Firebase. We also need, just like we imported these from Firebase slash auth, we need to import some things from Firebase slash Firestore. Firestore directory there. And what we're gonna need is set doc and also doc, okay? Now, basically, whenever we create a new user, and I'm just gonna go ahead and real quick, go into authentication, I'm just gonna delete this, delete account, boom. So now we have zero users in our authentication account, right? Zero users. So the way we're gonna do this, whenever we have a new user sign up, okay, let me get some errors done here. Whenever we have a new user sign up, we automatically want to store this user inside our cloud Firestore and also initialize an array, just an empty array of uh, saved movies, but it's gonna be empty by default. Then whenever we add a movie, it just goes into that array. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do that here in our auth context, okay? So we have our doc and set doc imported and right here in our sign up function, okay? <clears throat> What we're gonna to want to do is remove that return because basically if, if we return that, nothing else after the return would be processed. So what we're gonna say here is set doc, okay? And then here we say doc uh, db, and then we're looking for users email, okay? And then what we're gonna to want to have is saved shows, is what I'm gonna call it, saved movies, saved shows, whatever. And we're just gonna set that to an empty array, okay? So now whenever we run this function, which is ran every time we sign in, sign up a new user, we're gonna automatically create in our database, a user's file here, and then an email, okay? So let's see if this works. Let's cruise on over here. Getting some errors, that's okay. Just refresh that thing there, boom, there we go. So let's sign up a new user. Let's say test at test.com. Remember, I just deleted this guy, so there's nobody in here. Password, hit enter. So let's check and see. We should have, let's refresh. Let's see if it worked. Any errors? We have a user, boom, there we go. And we have an empty array. Look at that, dude, that's how, how easy it is to create a backend in Firebase. And just to show you, we can close that again. Just to show you, I'm gonna log out and just sign up a new user. I'm gonna say Joe at uh, say joe at gmail.com password sign him up and now we should actually refresh this and now we can see another user here now we have joe in there boom and save shows so now what we want to do now that we can actually log in and, and save user specific data what we want to do is be able to actually store this so whenever we click on this heart we want to store this specific movie inside our save shows array so we're actually done with the auth context. And where we wanna go next is the uh, the movie here, our movie component, okay? And inside our movie components, we're gonna import a few things. We're gonna need our user auth, right? So our user, user auth, yeah, user auth, mm, context. There we go. So we're gonna need that as well. Uh, we're gonna need import. Oh, whoa. DB, it's gonna go in curly brackets. Sorry, I'm so, I still have not, I've yet to get a uh, mic arm for my, my new mic here. So let's go into fire, fire base, okay. And then also we need, we need a few things from the fire base slash fire store. There we go. And in here, we're gonna need uh, up array union, okay doc and update doc there we go so that's what we need right there so let's go ahead and grab access to our context so we say const and this is gonna be whoa, uh, user here okay equal to user auth there we go unsave 
Now we're gonna want a few more things of state in here. We're gonna want a saved and set saved. And I'm gonna show you why we're gonna use that here. So let's say saved, set saved, equal, set saved, equal to use state. That's gonna be false and there we go. Okay, so let's, next, what we wanna do here is I'm gonna create a movie ID reference here. So I'm just gonna say const movie ID, okay, equal to doc, and this is gonna be db user users, okay. Then we're gonna use back ticks, we're gonna use a template literal, and what we're gonna wanna grab here is user optional training here dot email. So what we're saying, we're the referencing, <clears throat> we're referencing the database of users, and then we're gra grabbing the specific user email. That's what we're referencing right here, okay? So, uh, even number of segments, users have one. That's fine, don't worry about that right now. We'll come back and fix this. So, that's looking good right there. Pretty sure that's good. All right, so what we wanna do next, okay? What we wanna do is have a save show, um, a save show function is going to be an arrow function. So I'm just going to say save. I'll say save movie, save show. I'm going to say show. doesn't matter here. So save show, and this is going to be an asynchronous function. Okay. And now every time we save, a show, what we want to do is check to see if a user is logged in because we only want to run this if a user is logged in, else we're not running anything at all. So if we'll say user optional training dot email. Right. So basically we're saying if user that email is true, otherwise it's null, right? If nobody's logged in. So if a user is logged in, it will be true. What we're going to say is set, we're going to say set like to opposite of like, okay. Set saved to true. And then we're going to want to await update doc. Okay. And then we're going to grab the movie ID, okay, movie ID, and then we want to say saved shows, and this is how we're update, okay, this update doc, save shows, and the way we update documents in Firebase is we use array union, so we're gonna say array union, just like that, then we can throw everything in here, we can say ID, so gonna, each movie has an ID, which we have to, in order to save something or delete something in Firebase, it has to have an associated ID, and luckily for us in here, all of our uh, uh, our movies have their own ID. So what we can say is ID here, and we'll just say item dot ID. And then here we're gonna have a title and that's gonna be equal to item dot title. Then here we're gonna have the image and that is gonna be the item dot backdrop path, just like that. Now go ahead and save. And, but that's if we're logged in else, we want to send an alert. Okay, it says, please log in to save a movie. Okay, now go ahead and hit save. Let's just refresh this here. Looking good. Now we're not logged in. Let's click. Oh, we gotta hook this thing up first. So, <clears throat> movie ID. So let's hit save to set saved. So, where are our hearts? So, for this P tag, right? This Both our hearts are inside of a P tag. And on click, what we want to do is run the save show. Let's see if it works. So when we click this, right now it's FA heart. Whenever we click this, we want it to change heart. So it's now a filled heart. So change the icons and save this movie into our database. But we're not logged in right now, so it should give us an alert. Please log in to save a movie. There we go, you guys. That's looking good. Okay, so let's try and log in now. And we'll log in to one of our users. Let's just do, uh, we'll do Joe there. So we'll log in. We'll let Joe log in at gmail.com. And then let's sign in with his unsecure password of password. There we go. Now, Joe likes this movie Uncharted, so he's gonna save it. Boom, there we go. We did not get the alert. And now you can see our show uh, has the heart button. So let's just see another one. He likes Sonic the Hedgehog and maybe Batman. Now let's go and see in our database. 
look at that. We have the ID, the image, and now we have access in our database. Now we can go into our database, grab this information and display it on our account page. So, and this is user specific data. So if we look at test, nothing is in there. And again, now we can log out. <clears throat> Let's log in with our other user test at test.com is password of password. And you know, he can still log in. He doesn't have any shows, not listing any shows. So let's go ahead and log him out. Let's log back in with Joe here so we can see Joe's shows. So Joe at gmail.com password. And now what we want to do is we're going to want to go to the account page. Okay. So we're going to go to the account page and that is where we're going to show out our listed movies or shows, however you want to say it there. So let's have an account. Now let's go ahead and close that movie there. We can close Firebase. And what we're gonna be working in is the account, okay? And for our account, we're gonna create a new component called uh, saved shows. Let's just go ahead and create that. Saved shows.jsx, RFC, get our functional component. Now inside of our account, what we're gonna to wanna to do is display We'll display, I can't log in here. That's cool. We're going to have an account page and let's go ahead and style that right now. So inside of our account page, make this just an empty fragment. So let's have a div and in here, let's give it a class name of widthful text white. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. That's what we want. Now this image is going to be our background and I want this to be, let's go into our Log in, and I'm just gonna grab this right. I'm gonna grab that whole image um, element all together. Paste it in here, perfect. Now I don't want this to be hidden or blocked, so we can actually just delete all of that there. And what I want to say with full h full, that's fine. Uh, an object cover, that's what I want. But for the height, I want it to only be 400 pixels so 400 pixels see boom there we go and if we resize we're maintaining our aspect ratio perfect that is what we want you guys there we go you don't need that little space i do want to add an overlay on here so we get a nice little overlay so let's create another div and let's give that a class name it will say bg black uh 60 for a 60 opacity fixed top is going to be zero left zero and width is gonna be full and height of height of 550 pixels. There we go, perfect. And that's what we want right there. Nice little overlay in here. And in this div, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna just save in this div class name. This is we're gonna have, it's gonna say account or my shows rather, just say absolute top. We want this to be 20% from the top there. And then we'll just say P dash for MD of a padding with eight. So anything above the medium breakpoint, we have eight on padding. And in here, we're just gonna have H1. And this is gonna say, actually, yeah, it's gonna say my shows. Perfect, that's what we want. Let's give this class name. Text 3XL. Then anything above medium, we're gonna say text 5XL and font bold, okay? That is what we want right there, you guys. That's perfect. Now, we want to render through our shows down here. Okay, you guys, we wanna render through all our shows, but we only wanna grab the shows that are in our database, okay? So we're gonna do that in a component called the save shows that we just created. Let's go over to our save shows. And this is gonna be pretty easy because it's real similar to what we've already done so far with the rows and the movie component. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and find our row here. And we can just kind of select our row. That's what we're gonna need there. Um, for our sh save shows. So for our row, what we're gonna do is just grab all of this here, everything inside the brackets. And I'm gonna put this in here. Make sure we got that H2, perfect. So I'm just gonna make sure we get everything correct here. So inside our save shows, let's just paste that in there. 
go ahead and save. We can get rid of that. And instead of this title here, what we can just say, say my shows. I'm gonna say my shows, just like that. And we don't need any of this row ID stuff, so we can ditch that. Don't need that. In fact, we get some errors if you leave it. So get rid of all that. And this is my shows. Here we go. Perfect. And so we want to render everything out down here. We're gonna need a few more things, okay, from uh, from the row. And if we haven't done so already, you're gonna to wanna to import these. So, boom, auto import that one and that one, there we go. And we don't need this movie. So instead of that movie, we're actually gonna just let's grab our movie component and let's just grab this entire thing. We're gonna copy that and close that. Instead of this movie component here, this is what we want to map through. But this P tag here with the hearts, we don't need any of that right there. And this is actually going to be uh, IMG, okay? And the reason it's not background path, if we go to our image, is we're grabbing this from our database. Now, we're not grabbing this from the API. No longer are we doing that. We're just grabbing it from our database, and we saved it as IMG, and just the file path there. So that's what we want to do there. And we're keeping this base URL. So that's looking good. And we are going to need inside the row here, we're going to need that slide left and slide right. So let's just put that... Um, inside of our um we're gonna put that inside of our account here or sorry inside of our safe shows so let's throw that in here we're gonna need a few thing few other things inside here as well so we're gonna need the use state and use hook so let's go ahead and use state and also the use hook or sorry use use state and use effect apologies we're gonna need our context so user auth okay context there we go and let's have this here so we're gonna need the const user equal to user auth no oh, not that auth method there okay and then we also since we're not while I see this let's get rid of that we don't need the row ID so we're not gonna do any of that crazy stuff in here now we need to get a few more things here so we need to get import db from our firestore or sorry firebase and then actually from from firestore so this is going to be from firebase slash firestore what we're going to need it from here is we're going to need the update update doc i think we're just going to need doc itself and then also uh, on snapshot. So we're taking a snapshot of the database and what that is basically is just taking a, a picture, if you will, of the database at that current time. And we're gonna wrap that in use effect. So every time our component mounts, it'll take a snapshot and it'll relay what's uh, in our database. So we're gonna put all this um, down here and we are gonna need our use state here. And it's gonna be just like the ones before, just an empty array. There we go. And we say just movies set set movies just like that okay so perfect let's go down here and do our snapshot okay so for our snapshot what we're gonna say uh we're gonna wrap this in a use effect so use effect there we go and instead of in our dependency array we're gonna send a set instead of an empty array we can just say user optional chaining the email so every time there's the email change the the use effect fire off so what we can say is on snapshot okay then on this snapshot what we want to do doc db okay we're looking for users and then back ticks we're gonna do our template literal and what we're looking for is user with our optional chaining dot email okay then just outside of that we're gonna have an arrow function with doc there like that and then we're just going to set our movies to doc dot data optional chain dot saved shows go ahead and save that now we need to import this so put our saved shows just like that go ahead and auto import that make sure we're imported here save shows that's what we want right there perfect perfect all right so let's go see if we have any errors now looks like we do cannot read properties of undefined reading map okay so this is in our saved shows. <clears throat> so we're mapping, th let's look at what we're doing here. So we're, see, we are, we have our state, we're having a use effect, okay? And we're looking at it on snapshot, 
we're not having any syntax errors. We're going to our users, user email, doc, set movies, doc, dot data. Look at that. So save shows. Okay, let's see, that should fix. Let's see if we get any more errors. Boom, there we go, must use. Oh, hey, there we go. Uh, it wants a unique key prop, but let's do that. So ID, and we can just say key equal ID, there we go. So again, let's refresh. And boom, look at that. Now we, we can't delete anything yet, but hey, let's go ahead and let's delete one of these. So we're deleting that, uh, delete Batman, get rid of you. Delete it, and let's have a look. Look at that on the snap, and that's the snapshot, you guys. So every time the snapshot changes, okay, or we run this use effect, okay, and then it takes a snapshot and it updates just like so. So let's we want to add a little uh, icon here, a little close here, so we can delete that thing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do that in. Um, don't need that. We're gonna do that here inside the safe show, and where we're gonna put that doesn't really matter where we put it here. We'll put it. Um, yeah, we're gonna put it over here. We're gonna put it right in here. We can say inside of this P tag, I guess we want here. Let's pat it right here. So let's give it a P tag and we're gonna use AI outline close. Yeah, close just like that. And this is another react icon. So let's go up here and just import AI outline close from React icons. Do you remember what we're supposed to add right here? AI. It's correct. Here we go. AI directy. Perfect. So, uh, of course, it's going to throw some more errors. Oh, right, we're good. So there's a little X. You can kind of see it down there. So let's style this thing. Um, basically, we want this to be class name, right? We want this to be absolute. Okay. Text gray 300. And then we're also going to say top four and right four. So we should see our X up there. Boom, there we go. Perfect, that's what we want you guys. Now, almost done, dude, we're about to wrap this up. So let's give this some a delete functionality here. So on this P tag, we're gonna have an on click, okay? And in here, we're actually gonna have, um, I'm gonna pass something through here, an arrow function, okay? So we're gonna say go. And in here, we want to delete show with the past ID like that. That's what we want right there. So I will say item ID. We are gonna use a past ID, but item dot D like that. Then up here, let's actually create our function, the delete show function. And we're gonna put that right here, just in there. And what we're gonna have, we wanna have a movie reference, right? So movie const movie ref, okay? And in here, it's gonna be doc there we go, doc, and it's going to be uh, db, okay. Then we're going to have users, and then our backticks here, so we're going to use our optional training. And this is going to say user.email. Oh, not now. Be sure we add our optional training in there. And and uh, that looks good for there, okay. And next, we're going to have a use of, or sorry, our, our delete show function. So we're going to say const delete show okay and this is going to be an asynchronous function async and this is going to take in the past id so now inside our function what we're going to do we're going to have our try catch block okay so try catch error there we go on console.log error go now inside here what we want so <clears throat> Firebase is a little difficult, right? When we delete objects in here out of an array. So basically what we have to do, we have to do this on the client side. So we have to basically remove it from our state on the client side and then push it back to Firebase, the updated array without the ID. So that's why we did that past ID down here in our, um, on our delete, whenever we click the delete button. So what we wanna say, and we're gonna put this in a result, right? So const, you can call this whatever you want here. Const result is equal to movies dot filter. Okay, and we want the item the arrow function, <clears throat> and we're gonna say item ID past ID. Then 
what we're gonna say is uh, await. Wait, if I can spell that right. Now we're doing update doc, okay? And what we're saying is update doc movie ref. Okay, movie ref, and then we're just gonna say saved shows to the result. So let's see. Hopefully we get this correctly. Let's refresh, make sure we don't have any errors. Cannot read properties of map, save shows. What's going on here? Okay, yeah, I don't know what that was. Everything's working. We click this, it should delete our show. Yes, and let's just have a look at our database here. And we have one last show. We're logged in as Joe here. So Sonic the Hedgehog, and that's what we see here. Let's delete that. And as you can see, boom, it is gone. So let's wrap this thing up. And let me just explain that one more time for you guys. So like I was saying, Firebase won't let us just delete an item out of the array on, on the server side. So what it wants us to do is just handle it on the client side. So just to reiterate what we did there, down here on our function, the delete show function, we're passing it in an ID, okay? So that's what we're passing in on our function. Now on our actual function right here, the delete show, what we're saying is we're taking the past ID and what this const is, this result, we're saying movies.filter. And what filter does is basically it, it takes your array, it, it creates a new one minus uh, what you don't want in there, what you set the rules for. And what we don't want in there is this past ID right there. So, and that's what we're showing as the result in here. So we're just removing that ID out of our result and then just pushing it back to Firebase. So that's how that is working right there. And um, I, I apologize, my, uh, my, my video cut out, my phone cut out, I was recording with my phone, so I apologize. So we're gonna have to finish the build with just the mic here without a video, but that's all right, because we're about done with this thing. We have actually finished, you did awesome. Smash that like button if you like what you did today. If you got some value out of it, I'd appreciate it. Also consider subscribing to my channel. I'm gonna be putting out some more content just like this, but Let's go ahead and get this thing deployed um, and, we'll, and we'll get this thing finished up. So we're gonna do this in the CLI here. So I'm gonna be using Firebase CLI. So what you need to do, if you haven't already, we're gonna install the Firebase CLI tools. So the way we do that, I'm not sure if you can just use Yarn for that, I'm just gonna use MPMI. And this is actually, I'm installing it globally. I'm on a Mac here, globally. And um, we're just gonna say Firebase dash tools. There we go, perfect. And that's what we need to do right there. <clears throat> All right, so next, um, after that is done installing, we're gonna want to run the Firebase init. I know this is probably taking a minute since we're recording here. It should be pretty quick. <clears throat> it's probably gonna be a lot quicker on your side. So, and we're, like I said, we're not gonna be using anything in here. We're just be using the console in order to uh, host this thing, so. All right, now that that is finished, what we want to do next is run the Firebase login, okay? And let's see here, already logged in, perfect. Now what we can do now is Firebase init, initialize Firebase, and what we want to do, we want to come down here to hosting, that's what we want to do, hosting, configure files for Firebase hosting. I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger there. And then what we wanna do, I selected the space bar to select that. What we're gonna do is use an existing project, okay? And then we're gonna use this Netflix React YouTube. That's our project we're working out of. And real quick here, we want this to be the build folder. So pay uh, special attention to that. Make sure you type build here for our public directory. Configure yes, and we'll just say no for now. Okay. So next what we want to do is type, we're gonna use a, uh, yarn run build and then go ahead and press enter and what this is going to do is build out our project it's going to create this build folder and basically it compiles our react application and puts it into this build folder a bunch of code that you're not going to be able to read so that's what that's doing right now and once that finishes what we're going to do is just deploy this to firebase and i'll show you how quick that is looks like it's almost done here Everything goes down a little bit slower whenever you're recording at the same time. So boom, there we go. Awesome. So now we have, now we just need to deploy it and we're just going to say Firebase deploy just like that. And it is going uploading. There it goes. Boom. That is it. You guys check this out. We're going to have a look what this is. Hey, there you go. Check it out. Our live hosted very own Netflix right there. Smash that like button, you guys. I hope you liked it. Let's go ahead and sign up here. Create a new user. And I'm gonna say, what's this guy's name? 
tim at gmail.com and his password is going to be password and just again here let's check this out there's no tim in here refresh make sure and we want to log in just in case you think we didn't do it here so sign in boom there we go and let's go ahead and save some sh save some shows for tim here boom northman batman there we go let's see it let's see it boom there it is and inside tim there we go you have his save save shows there all right you guys smash that like button thanks for following along i hope you enjoyed it um if you if you into react into programming consider subscribing to my channel i'm gonna be pumping out some more react videos so thanks a lot for watching you guys i'll see you on the next one